Houston, our instruments are showing that we have a incoming message from deep space. Repeat, Houston, we have an incoming message from deep space. Houston, we'll begin playing message now. Houston, we're going to try and translate that up here. Hold for translation. Translation complete. We'll begin playing message now. Hey, it's me, Melissa. What do you do when the aliens invade? Take a shot of MK Ultra and watch Melissa Jade. Put on your tinfoil hat and tune right in. We got that crime spree, flat earth theories, government conspiracies, a complex Mandela effects, unidentified optics, a mind expanding, big moon landing, what it all depends understanding. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Aliens on the sun, or in Area 51, time travels, unravels, haunted castles, cops are baffled, potential experimental thoughts that make you transcendental. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Crime streets, flat earth theories, government conspiracies, complex Mandela effects, unidentified optics, a mind expanding, fake moon landing, what it all depends understanding. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Hello, everybody. Hi, the Shiznits. Hello, Harlot, People May, Rebecca, Jay Surreal, Michelle, Kelly, Crime Crochet, Coiffe, Kathy Ford, Tommy Gunn, Bean Feathers. I love you as well. We have Mama J. Oh, you're so sweet. Hello, Maria. Amy, Jenny, good evening, K Breeze, Jean M, Rebecca. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, we have Carolina, Linda, Michelle, Aries Girl, Angela, oh, Mark Klein, Hippie Chick, Jos uh Josepho, Mia B. Let it go is I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Um, Elena, Shelly Bean, Musicity Mom. I know, right? He saved the day, Musicity Mom, was singing the intro. Hello, Steph sells stuff by the seashore. Donna Brown, K Cat, Jacqueline, Nana Banana, Karen, Crystal, Just Jen, Jesse Lynn, Simply Complex. Belinda Buckner, Christina, Eddie, Kimberly Wells. Cosmic Lotus Consulting, Lisa Corinne, Amy, Leanne. Woo, we got everybody here to start it right off. I have missed you all. Uh, if you weren't with us last night, we took a break uh, from the jail files and we did uh, Tuesday trivia. I've been doing Tuesday trivia from the very beginning of my channel's existence. Um, I was doing it every Tuesday. Uh, we actually never used to miss a Tuesday, but when I started, it was actually the Letitia Stout trial. When I started doing the daily recaps, I wasn't able to do it every Tuesday anymore. Um, and so it had been a while since we had done our Tuesday trivia. And then we did it last night for the first time in a while. So I know there was a bunch of new people in the chat who was watching it for the first time. And it was just so much fun. And uh, I had such a good time. And it was a it was a nice break. And it was just nice to have some laughs. And so if you were here with us last night, I am so glad and we had a great time. Um, but 
glad to be back and we're here for episode five of our jail files of Letitia Stouk. I'm listening tonight with my eggnog with my earbuds while working, but I'm ready for it because she just keeps on. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. We're probably going to do it again uh, next Tuesday, Rebecca. We're trying to get back into the swing with our, with our trivias. Um, it was so funny, Kathy. Hey, Meat Beats. You had to watch the replay, Belinda. Oh, it's so it's, it's really fun. If you're definitely, if you're interested in, uh, being a contestant and joining on panel, feel free to email me. We rotate. I do need to like, if you are looking to do trivia, the only thing with trivia is, is that, um, unless I'm doing it old school. And when I say old school, that's me asking questions from the panel to the chat. Um, I do need to know ahead of time who's going to be coming on panel. So usually I'll have to know like the week prior who's going to be coming on the following week because I have a certain amount of spots depending on what game we're playing. Um, and so I need to know. Um, thank you, Amy. I, it is crazy, but I am still testing positive. <laughs> uh, so I'm just kind of going to give up testing because I'm running out of tests. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm still symptomatic. Like I'm 85% better, but there's 15% that's just lingering. It's just lingering and I can't get rid of it. Um, but I'm 85% of the way there. Um, and so, but I'm, I'm still testing positive, but I'm being told that you could test positive for a while after. So I'm just kind of, all right, you know what, if that's the case, let me just stop wasting tests. Let me stop wasting tests. Um, we should have a Letitia trivia. We can, we could totally have a Letitia trivia if you guys want. If you are somebody who is very dedicated to this case, I could totally make 20 questions off the top of my head about Letitia without a problem. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, Cosmic. It's that, it's that last bit. Like, listen, uh, <laughs> my COVID is just keeping on, Beth. You are right. Hey, Legendary. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that last bit. Listen, I'm not complaining because that congestion was crazy, but it's just that last bit and it, the fatigue, honestly, the fatigue is kicking my butt. Um, but they have said some people can test pot. That's what I'm being told. Um, but the, the only thing I'm holding out hope for is the fact that I'm still symptomatic. So it's not like, oh, well, wait, the symptoms are completely gone. So why am I still testing positive when I have absolutely no symptoms? and I'm testing positive, then I'll be like, what the hell? You know, I've never seen so many COVID tests at the same time. You guys, I've had, I've taken so many COVID tests. I've made a COVID fort. Like I could literally build a wall around me of COVID tests. Um, <laughs> uh, for, for, for real, like I went a good week without eating. So I could only tell you like the last few days when I've eaten, I no, I, I think, I don't think so. Um, now if I lost taste that week, I don't, I don't recall because I didn't eat anything that week. So, um, but I was drinking, so I don't think so. Um, I hope not, <laughs> I hope not, but it just keeps on. It just keeps on. I haven't used the nasal spray meat foot. I haven't used it in, in since that last day um, that I was super congested. Oh, do you miss this? I'm so sorry. Hi, Cheryl. Now, this is the third time that I know about that I had it, that I have it. And the last time I had it, I it was actually in Disney, um, not this summer, the summer before. Um, and it ruined my last two days of Disney. I had gotten it really bad. I got it. I was one of the first to get COVID in 2019. Like I got it when it was still really scary to get it. 
and nobody would go anywhere near me for three months, like all the way in the beginning, COVID, and all of the hospitals were locked down. That was the first time I had COVID. Then not this past summer, the summer before I had COVID and then this time. That I know about, but if my friends didn't say, hey, take a test, I wouldn't have tested. So there, I'm sure there's plenty of times that we're positive for COVID and we just don't know about it because you don't test. You know what I mean? You do too, Steph? Oh, no. That's what I'm saying. I'm sure there's a bunch of times and you're just asymptomatic. You know what I mean? Oh, Kelly, that stinks. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm just looking at it like I'm lucky it didn't ruin the whole trip, but the last full day at Hollywood Studios, oh, it was the headache it, for me. It was, it was the where I didn't had no medicine and it was the most horrific headache. And I have headaches every day, I take Excedrin every day of my life. Um, it was the most horrific headache I've ever experienced. And then I, like an idiot, went on the rock and rolling coaster. And if you don't know what the rock and roller coaster is, it goes from like zero to a hundred in two seconds. But I wasn't about to wait on like a two hour line and not get on it. And I fucking knew I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. And oh my God, I've never felt throbbing in my life the way I felt that throbbing in my fucking head. I know Michelle, but like, Nothing works the way Excedrin works. All right. Either way. Either way. I'm not meaning to bore you guys with my, my COVID. We're here to do episode five. We're going to do the same format that we have been doing. Hi, September. We're going to do the same format that we have been doing. Um, uh, episode four, we had started a phone call. And then we had stopped it so we could go over to the ward case studies. So we're going to pull up a couple of documents and then we are going to continue on with that phone call with where we had left off. So let me pull up the documents and the incidents report. Yes, you can, Ron Swartz. Hi, Shirley girl. And I saw, I wasn't sure who said, I don't remember, uh, that Nadie's wax melts, they had gotten their wax melts and it smells delicious. That's Nadie's wax melts. I'm so happy that you bought them. Um, anybody who hasn't already tried Nadie's wax melts, you guys, and it's a perfect option. Oh, I didn't do exclamation. It's a perfect option if you're looking for like a little holiday gift, um, her wax melts are so good and they make your house smell so amazing. So whoever left the comment, uh, that they received theirs and it's, yes, they're so good. And she, I just got, I ordered mine and I got, um, the new holiday scent and the Christmas like sugar cookie. I'm so excited to try it. I'm so excited. Okay. You can't eat them. K Bray's. <laughs> All right, so let me share my screen. Oh no, Michelle. That is horrible. I'm glad you're okay. Oh no, shits and giggles. Well, it's okay. We're just about to start. Okay, so this is where we had left off with the toilet. We last left off with the toilet. Right? Yep. 
Okay. So she damaged her toilet. Yep. All right. So you guys remember these pictures? That's where we last left off with episode four. Letitia damaged her toilet and the desk. And she claimed she, oh, she had a night terror and she fell off the bunk bed and her head managed to break steel that was fused. <laughs> sure, Tisha. Sure. Because that seems totally plausible, right? Where did I put? Okay, hold on one second, guys. Okay, so our next incident it's the narrative is inmate Borkard fears for safety. Oh gosh. And it's dated June 6, 2020. So it says at approximately 1930 hours, Letitia was on her hour out. Letitia was standing in front of cell redacted that houses inmate nasty. I could not hear most of the conversation. However, I did hear inmate nasty say that all her information was on the national news. I heard inmate nasty say this several times. I then heard Letitia call her a snitch. I heard inmate Nasty say that money appeared on her books from people she does not know. I heard Letitia say that people she does not know from around the world puts money on her books. Um, I'd like to know if that's true. Hi, Stephanie. I want an inmate nasty. You know what? If I do merch, I'll do an inmate nasty shirt just for you, little Red Riding Hood. Um, I'd like to know if that's true. Okay. I, cause I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised because I do know that there are people who support murderers. But I'm just going off of like the maybe it's in here. I, someone say crime curious three times because like we don't know of any money that was put on her books, but I'm sure it's documented. Hi, Amber. Hi, Brandywine. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to know if there has been money put on her books. It's all documented. Yes, but there is a difference between guys and girls. That is true. Don't tell me it's not true, okay? <sighs> guys will have women who send money, no problem. Now, girls who kill children... Not as easy. Now, I'm not saying it's it doesn't happen. I'm just saying not as easy. Stop it, legendary. <laughs> um, so I think it's totally possible. I just don't know because she's never mentioned on all of the calls we've heard. We've never heard her mention that there's been money added to her books. But then again, I don't think she would mention that to Aunt Brenda because she wants Aunt Brenda to put money on her books. You know what I mean? Yes, there is Mama J. I 
as far as we know, trial was the last time. Unless you're talking about like a phone call, Carolina. So it says, I was aware that there was a criminal filing against Letitia by Deputy K. Draper for criminal solicitation. Letitia allegedly gave handwritten notes to inmate Nasty stating that she was going to escape from the window in her cell and asked inmate Nasty to get the broom since she has access to it so she could break her window. At approximately 21 30 hours, inmate Nasty was on the phone crying. A short time later, inmate Nasty said that her friend just told her on the phone that her name and date of birth were leaked on Facebook and news websites were calling her a snitch. Inmate Nasty was crying and stated that she was in fear for her safety and the safety of her family now that her name was associated with Letitia. Inmate Nasty said if she had known her information was going to be released, she would have never turned in the letters to the deputy. Inmate Nasty said her name will now forever be connected to a murderer. Inmate Nasty stated that her mother was going to find this information out on the news. Inmate Nasty was visibly upset. Inmate Nasty stated that she was unable to contact her mom. And now her mom was going to hear about this on the news. I googled Letitia's name and I found an update on Fox 21 where there was a copy of the PC affidavit in its entirety. Le Inmate Nasty was listed in the PC affidavit numerous times by full name and date of birth. Letitia's new charges were on several news sites nationally. I called inmate class and spoke with Jarl Wood about the situation. I had also spoken to Sergeant Ward and Sergeant Smith. Inmate Nasty is classified as a general pop inmate. I see Wood stated he would look into the situation and call back. Jarl did call back a short time later and stated it was possible to do a swap with inmate Nasty. I stated I was not sure how that would work out because inmate Nasty is inmate Snitch's significant other and that inmate Nasty was already aware of the situation as it has been all over the news and it may cause more issues in the ward between Inmate Nasty and, and Letitia. I see Wood said he would call me back. I see Wood called me back and stated that he spoke with Liz O'Neill and she was not willing to move Inmate Nasty out of Redacted. Inmate Nasty has three inmates she has segregations with in Redacted. I see Wood stated I could move inmate Nasty a few cells down away from Letitia. Redacted is the only cell I had available, which was stripped of a desk. Inmate Nasty sits at her desk a lot and writes and reads books. It was then suggested by I see Wood that she could be made a seg all inmate, which means she can have no contact with other inmates and remain in the same ward. 
Inmate Nasty felt like being a seg all inmate was punishing her. I spoke with Sergeant Ward and relayed this information to her. She decided to add an alert to her as a court concern. So she will be transported by herself and in a cell by herself for her upcoming court date. Segregations between the two inmates have been placed. So that ends that incident report. So Letitia, no wonder she going around saying snitch, 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 snitch. <laughs> She's not happy. Well, Letitia, you shouldn't be going and trying to get other inmates helped, help to try to escape out of windows. Uh, the inmate nasty has a significant other who's a prisoner. Is Shay here? Hi, Kaleida Hope. Hi, Pointer Lover. Do, 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 do. I don't see Shay. Oh, there she is. Hi, Shay. Hi. I'm honestly shocked they didn't house her in a state facility until sentencing as a safe keep with all the grief she caused in the security status. Right. I bet she was really trying to fly on the broom out the window. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Um, okay. So then we have on June 9th, 2020, the narrative is Ward 182 inmate behaviors. All right. So at approximately 9.15, Letitia was standing at the cell door, lightly hitting her head on the glass window. Okay, so Letitia was standing at the cell door, lightly hitting her head on the glass window. Letitia appeared tearful. Are you okay, Letitia? No. Yes. Oh, no, no, sir. I mean, Jan, John, no. No. Well, that's too damn bad. Hi, <laughs> Warrior Princess. So Letitia's hitting her head, and she appears like she's tearful. Oh, poor Tisha. I asked her why was she doing that? Letitia replied, I am so over this crap. I don't have a bunk. I don't have a desk. I am getting punished for reporting my toilet not working. I didn't do anything to it. I told you guys so you guys can get it fixed. I am in a dirty cell sleeping on the floor. I haven't eaten since I got moved in here. Let's hear what Aunt Brenda's got to say about that. You were big. I'm serious. You look big. I only weighed 140 something. <laughs> well, you look humongous. But anyway, darling, I know it's time for us to go. I'll holler at you later. I love you. Please, Tisha, tell us more about how you haven't eaten. Hmm? 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 You want to tell us more about how you haven't eaten, Tisha? Bitch, did you just say you reported it? Did she just say she reported it?
Did you forget they had to approach you? Did you forget they came to you after they saw it? And they said, hey, Tisha, the fuck's up with yourself? Your entire desk is disassembled and your flushing mechanism is off the wall. And then, and only then, did you decide to say, oh, right, that. I forgot to mention that I happen to have a nightmare. And while I was on the top of the bunk, did I then fall? And in the midst of me falling, did my hard ass head hit? the steel and the steel managed to uh come off and uh disassemble why am i being punished for reporting this to you guys you didn't report it leticia you were taken from your cell immediately upon them noticing and then they asked you and you had the right to give a statement then you were found guilty did you forget this part you were found guilty and you were charged you were literally charged But here's Tisha. I am so over this crap. I don't have a bunk. I don't have a desk. I am getting punished for reporting my toilet not working. I didn't do anything to it. I told you guys so you guys can get it fixed. I am in a dirty cell sleeping on the floor. I haven't eaten since I got moved in here. <laughs> oh, bitch. Any objection? All objections. I object to every goddamn thing you just said. Every damn thing you just said. I offered to get some cleaning supplies for Letitia so she could clean the cell. Letitia stated, what for? I am still going to sleep on the floor. Oh, all right. You just wanted to bitch with no solution. All right. Right, 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 right. You just want a bitch for no purpose. Right, 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 right. Cleaning plot products. No, I just want a bitch that it's dirty. I don't want to actually clean it. <laughs> Tisha. The good old cleaning products. You complain it's dirty. We hand you Windex. Fuck that. No way. <laughs> no. <laughs> you expect me to clean my own filth? Who do you think I am? I'm a doctor after all. <laughs> She's a fucking doctor. <laughs> she doesn't clean. But I thought you were OCD, Disha. Thought you were OCD. Thought you were obsessive over that shit. <laughs> So she's like, what 
four. I'm still going to sleep on the floor at approximately 9.30 hours. Deputy Taze Cruz and I open Letitia's cell in order for her to get her morning medication. During this time, I did place several brown paper towels with Oxiver spray cleaner on them in Letitia's sink for her to use. Letitia refused her morning medication and continued to appear tearful until about 1230 hours. <laughs> Can you just imagine like Tisha with her fake crying with her puffy lip? <laughs> Letitia ate her lunch while walking around her cell. <laughs> She's, she's huffing and puffing around her cell while eating her bologna sandwich. This is bullshit. <laughs> Still whooping down the food. This is utter bullshit. <laughs> Give me that sandwich. <laughs> Hi, I'm the review. Hi, color Michelle. Yeah, you still ate it, Tisha. You still ate it. I asked Letitia if use the paper towels so I could throw them out. And she stated she did use them. Letitia also complained about ants being in her cell. The ants come marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. Bitch, ants would not even want to share a cell with you. Cut that shit out. So Letitia's over here complaining, there's ants in here. And they're not even the red ones, they're the black ones. Ew. Ew. Hi, Lori. Lori, uh, the Squishmallow came today, so thank you so much for getting that. Thank you, thank you. Um, so it said, what's it called? Letitia complained about ants being in her cell. I only witnessed one single ant in her cell the day before. Okay. Hi, Kristen. Okay. Hello, my, may I speak to your manager? <laughs> Can I speak to you, the manager? <laughs> I'm about to leave you a bad Yelp review, okay? Okay? This is unacceptable. I did contact the front desk staff manager and asked him to place redacted down on the pest sighting booklet for mug a bug company to service it. <laughs> mug a bug. Hi, Michelle. Mug a bug. This bitch is catered to. Tisha's stomping her feet over here because of one single fucking ant. And they're calling the front. I didn't even know that the fucking jail has a front desk. Okay. And they're calling Mugabug? <laughs> Mugabug? <laughs> like the concierge desk? Oh, one moment, please. <laughs> While we call Mugabug. Okay, <laughs> Jesus. Be advised, I did work redacted on 6520. Letitia 
did eat her lunch and dinner meals. You're goddamn right she did. You're goddamn right she did. Did we ever anticipate her not to eat all of her meals? I also gave her paper towels. I sprayed her cell with Oxiver and she wiped some of it down. Do us all a favor, Tisha. Wipe yourself down while you're at it. Lord knows you need some heavy duty disinfectant. On June 4th, Letitia did damage her desk, chair, cell window, and toilet flush button, and she was moved to redacted due to the damage. Letitia does not have any marks or redness on her forehead as of June 6, 1500 hours. At approximately 1339 hours, inmate redacted began loudly yelling, fucking bitch, you guys fucked with my lunch? Get me a new one now! Fucking bitch, fucking bitch, you hear me? Get me my new food now! Inmate redacted continued to yell out even after I attempted to speak with her. Inmate redacted continued to yell out obscenities and threats, which caused other inmates to yell at her. Be advised, I did witness inmate redacted eating some of the food she claimed we messed with. Inmate redacted will not receive an hour out today. <laughs> Wait, what did that have to do with it? <laughs> Wait. Why was that even added in there? <laughs> Why was that even added in there? That had nothing to do with Letitia. <laughs> that was just so random. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, Rando. I'm wishing you all the best. But for real, what, what? Usually they only include reports that somehow uh, intertwine with Letitia directly or indirectly. But this seems like just totally added on. <laughs> Fucking bitch, you guys better get me my fucking lunch. <laughs> and they don't redact Letitia's name. They only redact other inmates' names. Mm hmm. Interesting. Okay. Then the next day, on June seventh, we have Letitia's cell door missing a screw. <laughs> Tisha, you just keep on. Gonna keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on dancing all through the night. We're gonna keep on, keep on, keep on doing it right. Oh my God. So, at approximately 1700 hours, while serving dinner, Letitia called Deputy Zamora to her cell. Letitia showed Deputy Zamora 
A part of her door was broken. And a screw was dun 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 missing. Hey Shacto. Deputy Zamora said to me, we need to move Letitia to another cell. I went to look at the door and the inside of the door has a thin metal piece shape like a half circle, approximately two and a half times two inches, which should have two screws securing it to the door. Letitia's door only had one screw holding the metal piece to the door. The other screw was loose, allowing the metal piece to rotate around. Deputy Zamora conducted a pat search on Letitia and we moved her to Redacted. Deputy Zamora called Sergeant Rodriguez and Sergeant Rodriguez instructed us to take a picture including the damaged door and the new cell we were moving Letitia to. Photos were taken of both cells and both doors and attached to this report. Deputy Clark, who was assigned, assisted of the search with all of Letitia's property to look for the missing screw. We did not find the screw or any other contraband in Letitia's cell. Letitia was given all the property she had in her cell. Deputy Clark and I checked all the screws and redacted and no other screws were missing. We also checked all the screws and redacted two screw which hold the plastic light cover up and are currently missing prior to Letitia being housed in that cell. While inspecting, Deputy Clark and I noticed the first pane of glass on the right side of the window in the back of the cell has small sections of glass removed. This missing glass looks as if a round, small, hard object was used to chip away at the glass. This amount of chipped glass is not a security issue as it is. However, it appears someone may have been trying to chip the glass away enough to remove the window. We also notice another area on the right bottom section of the glass had an area that was etched out. This area was approximately a quarter to a half inch in diameter. None of the etching penetrated through the glass this window also has two panes of glass. I notified inmate Class Yarley of the damage to the door in Redacted, and it is being placed out of service. This cell is a red sheet cell and is used often. I placed a work for this door and I asked if this repair could be a high priority. I also informed inmate Class Yarley about moving Letitia to Redacted. Letitia, you try to chip your way out. So look, what is she doing? What you doing, Tisha? So let's look at this first. So one, you took the screw. Where'd you put the screw? You keystern it. Where'd you put the screw, Tisha? Let's take a guess in the chat where Tisha put the screw guys put your best guess in the chat because Letitia isn't going to bring their attention to a missing screw Rebecca she doesn't think that far ahead the same way that when she Hulk smashed the deputy, she didn't think, well, what's my next move? Where am I going to go? The same way that she was telling Al she was pregnant and she was asking him to come to the ultrasound. She never thought, well, what if he says, yes, where do I meet you? What doctors? She didn't think to that part. She never thought to the next step. Well, I don't think she would flush it because she'd want that screw, you know?
her hoo-ha. Hi, Doxy. The poop shoot in her screw hole. <laughs> her prison pocket. Oh my God. <laughs> in her prison pocket. I like that. And then, okay, so this is Letitia's window. All right. Oh, it makes that picture now funnier, guys. The way she drew. Remember, she drew. She took, wait a second. You guys, wait a second. This bitch thought she was going to fit out this window. Oh. Oh, Tisha. Tisha. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. Oh, I'm not even going to laugh. You measured yourself and you said it's a perfect fit. Oh, honey, I don't even, I feel, I feel that, that shows the extent of the lies. She believes her lies. She believes her lies. Tisha, they <laughs> notice the shape of that window. is very intentional. Shelly Bean. It's very intentional, that shape, right? So it still has access to daylight. Except a human body cannot fit through it. Damn, how many Trent accounts do you have? Um, the fact that she drew that and now I'm laughing so hard because it actually really did resemble the at the bottom of her note. Remember the little window she drew? It really did. It looked just like this. But the fact that she thought she was going to bust out a double paned window that's like bulletproof glass with what a screw <laughs> and a broomstick handle. Tisha, your right tit wouldn't fit out that window. Yeah, like you got five, what, five, six books? So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> oh, gosh. And so Tisha is etching out the window. Mm -mm -mm. Cause that's really sad. <sighs> it shows the extent that she's like sick. She's sick.
Right. It's not like she could even just bust out through it. Like she's talking about a slow chipping away. <laughs> like the window isn't going to just bust out. Like, yeah, do you know how long it would take to eventually get all the glass out that window? Oh, thanks, Riddler. Hey. <laughs> oh, Tisha. Oh, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> Tisha, what did you do? Oh, honey. You thought you were going to get out? <laughs> she wrote at the bottom perfect perfect fit that's funny oh man Tisha Where do you think you're going? Hey, Mr. Pinto. <laughs> Katrina. Who knew her drawing was actual size? <laughs> oh my god. Hi, nails and braids by Kim. I don't know, Wendy. She thought she was going, though. She thought she was going. <laughs> this is, again, the screw. I, I get this is the plate on this side, though. Hey, she had a door, though? Yeah. Wow. Surprising, they had a door. Yeah, hit that thumbs up if there's no way Tisha could have fit through that fucking window. They do, Elena. They, they do. <laughs> Hi, G baby. She just keeps on. But yeah, you can't even measure it by the damn width, the how many books fit. Because as you can see, the ledge is much bigger than the actual window itself. No, we don't know where she put that screw. And we'll never know. scratches and stuff I did not Jack did not don't you come in here and accuse me of such a thing oh thank you Kellyanne Burns Not even five books high. Not even. Look at her toilet. She sticks her head in that. She literally sticks her head in that. <laughs> that was so inappropriate. I still feel bad for doing it. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Never again. <laughs> yes, you got to play next time, Jack. Uh, welcome, Shelly Bean. Thank you so much for becoming a member. No, she doesn't wash her hair. She, come on, Doxy. You know better than that. She doesn't wash her hair. But she does do phone calls in the toilet. And we'll get to those incident reports. Trust me. Hey, MK, you right. You rang. <laughs> I didn't find it funny. That was very inappropriate, uh, Jack. So I apologize again. You rang. Lurch, motherfucker. Oh, this, this must be the button that summons the vampires. <laughs> the Volturi button. This is the Vittori button, guys. Yeah, that summons justice. Don't push it. Hello, Joyce. <laughs> Hello, Joyce. Joyce. <laughs> Oof. No, they never found the screw opinionate opinionated. That screw, <laughs> we'll never know. Okay. Lovely. Ew, just knowing her ass has been on that. <laughs> Ooh. Ugh. That poor toilet. <laughs> Justice, what are you doing at Joyce's? <laughs> Catherine. Hello, Joyce. Joyce. That toilet has seen things that no man should see. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> Imagine if this is what you had to look like. <laughs> Imagine if this is what you had to look at every time you brush your teeth. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, every every day when you brush your teeth, usually you have a mirror right in front of you. <laughs> this is what you see every time you look up, like cobwebbed vent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck happened there? Oh man. I don't know what that is, MK, but <laughs> I'd be fucking scared someone's on the other side of that vent. Jesus. <laughs> like I'd be looking like I'd be like getting real close to it and looking with my eye terrified that there'd be another eye looking back <sighs> is that her light bulb oh those dead bugs <laughs> oh What is in there? <laughs> is that a fucking gun? What is... is that a whole ass fucking weapon? <laughs> is 
Is that a whole ass t-shirt up there? What is that? It's the script. <laughs> it's the screw. <laughs> bother me what is it <laughs> uh, what is it <laughs> I have no idea what it is but that's something um Those look like a few bugs, but that's definitely, it's like, it's like a fucking Hershey bar. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, to grind diva. Oh man. I know the other ones are bugs, but that object, that big one, that has 90 degree corners, don't say it's poop, Michelle. Oh, man. Oh, no, there's more. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. What is that object over here? Oh, that's going to, that's going to bug me out. It's gonna bug me out. It's a check. It's a chill house dildo. Drumstick. You guys are killing me. Oh my god. I don't know. It's a bad light, though. These are her doors. Well, door, singular, where it's missing the screw. You guys are killing me. Look at the scratch marks. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look at the scratch marks on the door. Hello from the other side. Oh, no. Look at that. Look at the scratch marks. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not a horror movie. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> oh. I'm sure if I zoomed up, you'll see a fucking nail, <laughs> like a fucking fingernail. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, that 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 that's just that's just fucked up. Yeah, I don't I don't have I don't have nothing funny to say about that. That's just that's just haunting to me. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> are you <laughs> Are you requesting an audio track of my wheeze? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> Where can I just get you laughing <laughs> for two hours? <laughs> the soundtrack? <laughs> I don't know. Why would you want the soundtrack? I don't know. You want me wheezing on VHS? I don't know. Um, <laughs> are you talking about my life? I'm not playing a video, so I don't know. I don't know if you're talking about my lives. Uh, the lucky spinster. I'm not sure. Um, if so, I don't. I don't know why you'd want that. <laughs> <laughs> my life in each day. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh fuck. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, this is just the shit Tisha's up to. Tisha, Tisha, Tisha. But you ain't fitting out this window. I can tell you that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere, Tisha. <laughs> she actually said it's a perfect fit. <laughs> it's perfect. I measured it with my hands. Tisha. <laughs> but honestly, that's what's scary. That's what's scary is that that's the window Kevin even look. <laughs> it's not it's not that she lies to everybody else. It's that she lies to herself and that she believes the lies. I think that's what, you know, this is this should concern people. This should be concerning. Okay? She 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 took her fucking hands and she measured this with <laughs> and then she measured her chunk <laughs> and then she's like yes perfect <laughs> she thought she was thin enough <laughs> she thought she was gonna fucking Indian in the cupboard her way out of this motherfucking cell <laughs> like, what no <laughs> Uh-uh. Ain't gonna happen, Tisha. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, Crime Curious. Oh, Crime Curious. We had a question for you. What What was our question, guys? I don't remember. Our question was in the beginning. <laughs> Looking male slots are bigger. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> the fucking envelope slots are bigger. Oh yes. Do you know Crime Curious? If <laughs> um do we know if because she said in this she said over here in this incident report that um
that people from around the world were putting money on her books. Do we know if that's true? Sure. And I'll play. I see people are requesting it, so I will play it while we're waiting for you to come up. For the interviews, I don't have any fancy clothes. You go to my closet, you take whatever you need. You okay. Brennan. You guys got to look sharp. It's the most important day of our lives, okay? Okay, hey, Dad. What's your name? What's your name? What's your age? What's your age? Where you from? Where you from? What's your sign? What's your sign? Who you love? Who you love? What's your style? What's your style? What you do? What you do? What you drive? What you drive? Stop, drop, drop, and roll. Do that. Do it. Do it. Like a pro. Do that. Stop, drop, drop, and roll. Do that. Do it. Do it. Like a pro. Do that. Fit top, rolly, boy, we know you phony. Take her to the mall and buy it what she want it. Already smashed, so I'ma let the homie RP my cash and RP a Kobe. If you're born in September, then you know you're my type. If I see you on Tinder, then I gotta swipe right. If you're born in October, then you're just like me. Here's a resume. Can you fill this out, please? What's your name? What's your name? What's your age? What's your age? Where you from? Where you from? What's your sign? What's your sign? Who you love? Who you love? What's your style? What's your style? What you do? What you do? What you drive? What you drive? Stop, drop, drop, and roll. Do that. Do it like a pro. Do that. Stop, drop, drop, and roll. Do that. Do it like a pro. Do that. <laughs> Thank you, Rebellious Rose, for gifting a membership, and congratulations to whoever received it. Um, it's probably Rebellious Rose. You, if you just got it now, Crime Crochet Coffee. Congratulations. Um, I love it. Stop, drop, and roll. Yay. Crime Curious hasn't come up, though. I dropped the link. Um, no, she couldn't get through it. Not even that size. They designed the windows specifically for people not to fit through them. So no, not even that size. Look, you can't even judge it by the books because look, the books have enough room fit from here to here. But the window itself is only here to here. Uh-uh. And we have a crumb curious. Hello. Hi. Hey. How are you? Why do you ask so many questions? What are you, a cop? <laughs> I wish. No. Just Melissa. <laughs> I'm basically a detective. Basically a detective. According to Tisha's standards, I'm a doctor. <laughs> I'm a doctor in the case against Letitia Stout. I'm kind of hoping, no, uh, right. really, I'm, I'm really hoping that at the end of this, I'm going to get an honorary degree. You know how sometimes universities give out honorary degrees? Mm -hmm. I feel like... If I give Liberty University enough shit about the about what they have done here, uh, in this case against Letitia Salk, and the fact that this woman can't spell but she has a doctorate in education, I feel like I feel like maybe there's a reality where they will give me like an honorary degree. They should. And 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 then we can try to work on giving them a positive reputation, but I don't know. I mean, I'll do my best. And she was deemed illiterate, right? Uh, they deemed her illiterate. She was. Oh, yep. Melissa Jade. She was. De she was deemed illiterate, and also that was right around the time that she said one of her aliases 
was Tisha X. Tisha X like Malcolm X. Now, I don't know how many people in the audience tonight know who Malcolm X was. Um, I'm oh, gonna... God. What if she meant it? What if she did that Tisha X shit on purpose? Like she was trying to be a Malcolm X. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, listen, Malcolm X taught me everything I need to know about the value of literacy. That's what Malcolm X taught me. Right. Right. Uh, Tisha X has taught me personally how to still write a story about a person that you fucking hate and you hope that she dies in a brutal, brutal uh, like inmate justice system sort of just disgusting death, right? I hope that's what happens to her. But me too. Well, you don't just admit it. Well, I do. I do. Oh God. I'm a lot of but sad. but I have because I I delved into the case against Letitia Stauk as a professional, and my job was to objectively tell the story of due process in the case against her and open source intelligence, which simply means what information do we have access to as the public and why? Like, where does it stop and why? <sighs> Well, you've done an amazing job, and when we're in doubt, we just say your name three times. No. <laughs> <laughs> we just ask you. Don't do that, though. What if I don't show up? You've shown up nine out of ten times. No, I am not Beetlejuice. <laughs> you've shown up nine out of ten times. Just maybe a bit delayed. You showed up tonight. Damn it, did you say my name three times before I showed up here? Yeah, we, we said it like 15 minutes before you showed up. And you showed up. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Was there a question? Was I supposed to answer a question? Yeah, we were asking. So Letitia said in this incident report, um, and here you go, Rando, Nightbot's going to tell you right here. So in this incident report up here, Letitia made a comment about how um people all over the world put money on her books do you know that to be true oh god damn it uh okay what version of leticia made this statement was this okay and i need a year was this 2020 leticia was this 2023 leticia at what point did Let it was 2020 mm -hmm. In 2020, she said, okay, say that again. So it said how um, she, the, there was another inmate who made the statement that money has appeared on that inmate's books from people around the world that that inmate doesn't know. And that then Letitia said that people she does not know from around the world puts money on her books. Um... I can confirm that, yes, that is true. And in 2020, so really, when you look back at the records, what you see is that in about June of 2020, that's when all of the uh, the people that she had originally fucked with on Facebook, um, that's, that's when they all found their way to her. And all of the people with uh, YouTube channels mm -hmm. that were reaching out to her, um, there was lots of ways to reach Letitia. And this was all part of her public relations campaign. Now, Letitia was talking to journalists. Um, at first, it was Nicole Fierro from Fox 31, I think it was. It might have been Fox 21. Anyway, first it was Nicole Fierro. Then, then it was Lee Egan from Crime Online. Because remember, she wanted Nancy Grace to back up her uh, fake polygraph.com. You know, uh, the, 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 the lie detector that she passed that proves she had nothing to do with his murder, even though she wasn't yet accused of murder 
Mm-hmm. Wait, was you were you asking me a question? Are you there? But I'm curious. She muted, but I'm not sure if she muted on purpose. Um, I know she should get zero dollars. I wish. Um, oh, thank you, Shaq, though, for being a member for 14 months. Proud to be part of this awesome channel. We're proud to have you part of the channel. And as a mod, you are very uh, appreciated here. Yes, she was supposed to be on Crime Online. She made it for a second. She probably had to do something. I'm sure she'll be back. Um, I'm pretty sure just Aunt Brenda, and when she comes back, I'm pretty sure just Aunt Brenda out of the family talks to Letitia now. I'm not aware of anybody else. No, the two-part cruising interview is not back up unfortunately, and I probably won't be putting it back up. Okay. Well, you want me to ask you if she doesn't, she didn't look as humongous. Hi, Stacy Bobasi. Yeah, but she's going to make like absolutely nothing so ultimately uh the amount of money that they'll end up getting but i'm sure it's probably got to feel it's probably got to be uncomfortable to even get any money from Letitia, even as restitution I, you know i don't know i've never been in their situation but i'm sure it's got to be uncomfortable because it makes you i could imagine it makes you feel like you're receiving compensation in exchange for your child's death, you know, like, and so I'm sure that's the last thing on their minds. Um, again, I don't know. I've never been in the situation. Thank God, you know, like, but I can imagine them that not really being a top priority for them. Hi, Meta Mom. It will go to the state before family. Okay. Yeah, that good. Well, not good, but you know what I mean. Oh, thank you, on who sees. She keeps talking about the cartel. We might get our wish. Yeah, right? How to frame the cartel. <laughs> I'm not sure, Kawaii Taish. That's a good question. I could see that she is muted KPM, but I don't know if she did it intentionally. I would think that she did do it intentionally because she could hear us. So she would unmute if. Uh, she needed to. Over 50,000 in restitution. Wow. But what's unfortunate is. It, it, she'll never get that. But you know what I mean? She'll never come anywhere near it. I know, Tiny Dancer, there's a lot that I took down that I'm really upset about taking down. Um, and I probably didn't need to take down the gruesings. And I wish I didn't. And part of me wants to go over them again. But um, I just, in the moment, I did it. Because I was like, if I even had to question it at all, I just kind of took it down. But I'm sad about it. Maybe she got because can't see the mute. No. Well, it's I'm in under my phone too, so I can't even leave or else it'll boot me out to like message and ask. I just can't stand her. And so yeah, it sucks that people, but you know what? It makes sense because there were a lot of YouTubers and stuff and people from Facebook who wanted the story and add money on their books and stuff like that makes sense. Did 
Did it really, Aries? Doesn't it, Jacqueline? Oh, look at the doggy. It did, Tiny Dancer. Oh, hate is a strong word, but I can safely say I hate Letitia. Yep, Al did say he wanted nothing from her, including the restitution. How long ago did the uh, riot break out there, Aries? I don't think she hates Al. We like Letitia was messaging Al from Harley's phone. And for the longest time, Harley believed apparently Letitia, and Letitia was filling Harley's head with what she claimed Al was saying to her and stuff. It was. <laughs> It sucks because because of Letitia, Harley lost Al too, the only father that she's known. <laughs> this will crispy. Yeah, I think it's safe to say she ain't fitting through that window. No, no, no. And why does that look like a bird's nest right there? Doesn't that? Oh no, she fell off. I'm curious. Maybe her phone died and it like got frozen up here. Well, and she she was framing a guy in jail um that she spoke to the toilet there's crime curious <gasps> hiccups it looks like grass weeds of chia growing on the inside to me. Ch -ch -ch chia Oh, Elena, thank you. I've measured and it's perfect. <laughs> Ew, the lucky spinster. Oh, no. That sounds horrible. <laughs> but thank you so much, Elena. You're so sweet. Thank you.
This is the worst sell ever tree baby. I did not kick. Crime Carry is out. I promise she muted and then it eventually fell. Or those little sprouts they have at a salad bar. The little like mushroom sprouts. I dropped the link again, KPM. She like, but that's what I'm saying. Like the fact that like her brain just, she's, she'll believe her own lies. This is for curious. I dropped the link again. Come up. It's the stream yard spiracy. Oh, it's it's you know, it's a goddamn shame what she did. Um but sometimes you just gotta laugh at how ridiculous she is. She is not if she was you would know about it, Meatfoot now, wouldn't you? Okay, Mama J, I'll check it. There she is, Cron Curious. Can you hear? Okay. I am only willing to take this device off of mute for one reason. Okay. And that is because I would like to speak with you, Melissa Jade, okay. about something that i now understand to be called the crime curious card <laughs> go for it am i to believe am i to believe that when i was not present someone came into your chat and acted as if she was going to tell me something that was going on as if you were some sort of what dare i say perpetrator somebody someone threatened to pull the crime curious card out and rat me out to you this is true what were you doing what were you doing <laughs> i don't what did you do I don't what know. made someone pull what we now know is called the crime curious card the crime curious card and they said that they were gonna tattle tail on me to crime curious. It was Valentina, Rebecca. Yes, it was Valentina, and they said crime curious is gonna know about this, and I was like, go right ahead. Okay, here's what I know about Valentina. All due respect, Valentina, to my understanding, traveled from Rhode Island all the way to Colorado Springs, Colorado to be present for the verdict when Letitia was found guilty of Gannon's murder. Mm -hmm. And um, as part of that, what she did was she made some like signs and stuff that said like guilty, like she, she made signs. And, um, and so she was present for the verdict and there was like a spillover room and she was there now while she was there she had the opportunity to meet landon bullard hyatt mm -hmm. did i say that right mm -hmm. or is it landon hyatt bullard how do we say it how do we say landon's how do we say landon's name no i think it was bullard hyatt yeah i think as right. far as I know, as far as I know, her name is Lander, La wait, Landon Bullard. Yes, Hyatt. Her, well, 
But there was a whole thing that was none of our business about the person she was married to oh, yeah, that yeah, Letitia yeah. tried to blame for Gannon's murder. I yeah. mean, Letitia tried hard to blame uh, a gentleman named Mike Hyatt. I mean, she tried really hard to make him the center focus for a long time. It just, it didn't work out the way Letitia wanted it, but. Did you ever look into Mike Hyatt? No, no, I haven't. But Letitia tried to tell Landon that he was dead, right? Because I remember I saw that report in the case files. That Mike Hyatt had died? Yeah. You don't remember that one? I kind of remember it. But what I think happened is that someone falsely reported that Mike Hyatt had died. And... Because Landon wasn't in contact with him, Landon like uh, asked the police if he had died, and I think that uh, he was not actually connected in any way. There's very little about Mike Hyatt in the uh, 1,050 page case report. Very yeah. little. Yeah. It was just, from what I remember, it was Letitia had texted Landon that Mike was dead. and Right, Letitia, right. Now, now, yeah. now, weeks, weeks before, weeks before she murdered Gannon, she was trying to put it out into the world that Albert was not Gannon's biological father. Actually, Gannon's biological father was Mike Hyatt. She was trying to get it that it was Mike? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Those yeah, long so long scary. before Gannon's death, she was trying to say that Gannon actually belonged to Mike Hyatt. Oh. Cuz I know that she was saying that the his biological father was from the Lorson Ranch area, but I didn't know who. No, 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 no. Not from. You got to be careful. You got to be careful with the words. So not from the Lorson Ranch area. What Letitia tried to put out is that Gannon's biological father, who she was cryptically pointing toward Mike Hyatt, uh, Gannon's biological father was in the Lorson Ranch area oh. around the time that Gannon went missing. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so that was that was Mike Hyatt. So Letitia tried to say that Gannon's biological father, Mike Hyatt, was in the Lorson Ranch area around the time that Gannon went missing. She's such a shady bitch. Do you have any idea how many years of therapy it's going to take for me to get over writing this godforsaken fucking book? I really don't know how you're going to unravel being that invested. It's going to take a lot. Like when you get to the end, that's the point where it's going to kind of be like, now what do you do? You know? Oh, I thought I was so close to the end. And then we started getting jail calls. And yeah. now that we're getting jail calls, now I have, oh, God. How do you? Oh, you know, well, Melissa. It's, Melissa. It's, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, sweet Melissa. Mm hmm. I've never seen a case like it. Like, but I, I really just want professionals, you know, like who can understand her level of lying and like explain why, what, like, how did she think it was? Gonna you know what out? I want, Melissa Jade. You know what I want? What? I want Dorothy Lewis. <laughs> I want Dorothy Lewis. No, oh no, seriously. No, no, no. Billy's not here. God damn it. <laughs> uh, you want to talk to her? Oh my God. I, I want Dorothy Lewis. I'll say, do it. Okay, if I say it three times in the chat, will she appear? I don't know. It only works with you. 
<laughs> no, it doesn't work with me. We established that earlier. <laughs> I don't know, but she she. Was it sometimes to... works with me. It sometimes works. Yeah. Well, she, you know, she was recording for. She's clearly making some type of documentary about it, so maybe she'd be willing to talk. Uh, well, Melissa Jade, all bullshit aside, how do I reach out to Dorothy Lewis? How do I get? I need to speak with Dorothy Lewis from a position of understanding. Yeah. No, that would be an awesome asset to your book. So one of the people that I reached out to was uh, Park Dietz. And Park Dietz was somebody who, he's a forensic psychiatrist who testified against Dorothy Lewis in so many cases, like over the last three decades. Um, Park Dietz was involved in the Jeffrey Dahmer case. I mean, not the case, but the trial. Uh, Park Dietz testified. Um, but Dorothy Lewis is like his uh, in the in the public record case testimony uh, nemesis. And and Park Dietz gave me two brief interviews, but he wouldn't give me shit. Uh, he encouraged me to speak with Dorothy Lewis directly. Mm. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine if I were to actually be able to speak with Dorothy Lewis directly? God damn it! Uh, Little Red Riding Hood says that she has the email for Dorothy Lewis. I don't think that's going to work. I did try at least one email and I went through Park Deeds. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, because that would be awesome. That would be an awesome Well, And what, what would I say? I don't what would know. I say, Melissa Jade? What would I say? The, the truth that you're writing a book and that you would love to be able to just get her perspective and... and I can't that. handle the truth. You can handle the truth. <laughs> it's yeah. I don't know, but I, I'm not a I'm not a Dorothy Lewis fan. Me either. Yeah, she she would diagnose you. She would diagnose you, Jen. She'd My like, mom you used to work for HBO and Cinemax. Listen, in the basement of my father's house, there are at least 10 packages of what I will call Max Headroom sunglasses. And if anybody understands who Max Headroom was. Uh, oh, the old Max. Yeah. And there's a whole conspiracy with that. You know, Max Headroom? My, my mom worked for HBO in the time of Fraggle Rock. Do you remember Fraggle Rock? Mm -mm. Oh. Does anybody in the chat remember Fraggle Rock? Oh, wait, maybe not. See, this is this is why we accidentally mute. I'm about to do it again. Oh no. K Cat, thank you so much. K Cat says, anyone know what it takes to be offered a proffer? Do you have to know something? Is it a make a deal situation? Do you know Crime Curious? Oh, shitty, shitty, bang, bang. Um, okay, now I would like to start by saying that I am not an attorney. Uh, there's a good possibility I have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. Um, wait, what was the question again? Say it again. So, what does it take to be offered a proffer? Do you have to know something? Is it a make a deal situation? <laughs> okay. As not an attorney, what I will say is yes. A proffer would not exist had you not fucked up. <laughs> you fucked up up you fucked up equals proffer but i am not an attorney and now i'm gonna mute Jesus. Okay. yeah as far as i know like a proffer um 
it kind of use of information in exchange for like limited immunity or like a plea bargaining you know um but i can't i don't think that you'd ever be offered a proffer unless you have something um so I, as far as i know crackdown um Harley could have been charged with things. I don't think we will ever know the full extent because the evidence wasn't brought out on Harley. You know what I mean? Um, okay, I just want to pop in for one second and say, yes, caffeinated slug, you are correct. Okay, I got to go. Love you. Bye. Well, you got curious. <laughs> um, and so, what's it called? Um, it seems like, you know, I, it appears like in order for her full cooperation and testifying against her mom, there was an agreement not to pursue any charges against Harley, some type of proffer. Um, a proffer session can be beneficial to the defendant if the prosecution offers them a plea deal in return for information. Google. Thank you, Pinche Becky. Hi, Lucia. But then the judge was so adamant about saying she was completely... Right. It was, it was a bit confusing. I think what they're Honestly, I think the loophole they were getting out of with was Harley didn't knowingly commit crimes. I think they could have charged her, but I think like they they kind of leaned towards she was not like a willing participant in this. You know what I mean? So somebody like asked me recently, Melissa Jade, somebody asked me recently, why do you suppose that when it came time to put Harley Hunt on the stand, why do you suppose it was Dave Young and not Michael Allen, when this is one of the biggest witnesses of the entire case, why do you suppose they put number two on that witness instead of number one, right? That's a good question. Here's my theory, and it is worth exactly what you paid for it. Uh, nothing, by the way, in case you're doing the math. My opinion is worth nothing. Okay, my opinion is that Michael Allen is not a big fan of Harley Hunt. Oh. Now, Michael Allen has a job to do. Not only does he have a job to do, but he's this is a political office. And if you are a prosecutor... And you're considering running a case against 17 and 18 year old Harley Hunt. Is there a good possibility that you're going to come out the asshole? I mean, I'm just saying there's there, there, there are reasons why Harley Hunt was not charged. Now, I don't know anything. This is not inside baseball. I don't have secret information. But if I were Mike Allen, I definitely would not charge Harley Hunt. Now, does that mean that she's not complicit? Wait, do I mean implicit or complicit? Com complicit. Explicit. It's not that kind of party. <laughs> do I mean implicit or complicit? Which is the right word? Complicit. Complicit. Okay, complicit. Anyway, this is the this is the point where I randomly mute again. I mean, why did you even invite me? What the fuck is wrong with you? I think, well, you don't think, 
I think I, I, I like what you're going with. I think that Alan is very invested and he has been on it from the very beginning. And I think that maybe giving it to number two was because, yeah, maybe it was too hard. Um, and, but do you think not so much maybe for political purposes, but because they needed her testimony and it was her on the stand was so crucial in that trial. And it was, it was, I, I don't know if it's safe to say, cause the evidence against her was monumental. Yes. It, 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 she would have been convicted without Harley. But as far as testifying, Harley's testimony, she was one of the star witnesses against her mama or in that trial, you know? So do you think in exchange... Okay, in exchange, but was she? Uh, I'm not saying about... But was evidence. she? I'm not, it's not about the evidence. But I think testimony if you erased Harley Hunt's testimony from the trial, would Letitia still be guilty as charged? Yes, yes. with I just said, yeah, without Harley, she'd she still be guilty. guilty. But I think Harley on the stand was still very moving. It was still very to hear. Harley on the stand and to realize that her mom was traveling across country in the van with her daughter and Gannon's decomposing body in the back was so pivotal in, in my opinion it was so <gasps> like this it was just it was impactful so it wasn't about oh my god is there such bombshell evidence coming out with this with this witness on the stand versus is it making an impact with the jurors does that make sense do you believe that leticia stout could have killed her stepson without her daughter knowing oh i don't think hardly knew so yes i don't think carly knew but i think carly knew after the fact not from leticia telling her either let me be clear i think carly knew from common sense and willfully do you naive. do you identify with harley in any way do i identify with harley yes uh no, I I don't identify with Harley in any way, but I I feel like if mm -hmm. if I really search hard, can I find pieces to identify with? I feel like I you can do that really with anybody. Um, I feel like some of the nastiest comments that I get are from people who identify with Harley. So it was absolutely a loaded question. Like when I say, do you identify with Harley? Um, I know that people do. And I am trying, I am trying my best to understand all of you. Mm -hmm. The people, the people who believe that Harley is evil and she should be punished and and the people who believe that they know this young lady that they will never meet and uh, project their own qualities and values upon her. Um, I don't know her. I've only exchanged messages with her once, and it wasn't pleasant. She was upset that I used the word vacation. So there's a there's a there's a video on my channel that says Harley Hunt's pre-trial vacation, and she was so upset that I had used the word vacation, even though. If you go down in the description of her video, it says hashtag vacation. But she was mad that I used it in the context that I did. 
which was Harley Hunt's pretrial vacation. And, and the truth is, she went on a vacation all the right. way up until right before trial started. She went to, but, but when she reached out to me and she was mad, she was like, I'm not visiting, I'm not vacationing, I'm visiting my boyfriend. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference really is, but uh, she was she was really upset that I used the word vacation, and then I eventually showed her that I was only using the word that she used. The point is, Harley doesn't fucking like me. She blocked me from her Instagram. It's a whole thing. I'm sure that she was probably getting attacked from every different angle, and at that point, she couldn't decipher who was just a hater versus who was actually trying to just genuinely report What does that mean? Her. What does so that mean, a hater? What does that mean? What like is a I'm hater? Like what is a hater like, in the case against Letitia Stock? What is a hater? I'm saying like people who were just like being assholes just to be assholes. And like, so from the way she was perceiving it. And so at that point, even though you weren't doing anything wrong, you were just being general, like genuinely journalism and, and reporting on it. The exact what I did the appreciate. Mm-hmm. What I did appreciate, Melissa Jade, was that she kind of proved my point. Like, she was worried about what people were saying about her. But I was investigating her mother, who was, at the time, pretending to be other people online so that she could get her point across. So when Harley used her boyfriend's ID to contact me. It was, uh, it was weird. It was fucking weird. It was so weird. Um, Harley was, okay, I'll see you soon. Uh, Harley was, Harley was, uh, <sighs> <laughs> anyway yeah well it's it, there's just so many different aspects but do you know when you're like an ETA for your book because I feel like more and more just keeps coming out and it's like I don't know when you're ever going to ever get done because there's just one oh, thing I'm and another and Tisha just I'm quitting. keeps on I'm quitting I'm quitting yeah. so <laughs> I can't wait no I'm quitting I'm fucking quitting Melissa <laughs> I'm quitting. <laughs> it's a never-ending thing with Tisha. Tisha just keeps on. No. And if you just wait, <laughs> you'll no, never I'm quitting. get done. <laughs> I'm quitting. You'll never get done because Tisha just keeps on. And, and she just I cannot. I cannot wait until the jail calls are done. I cannot wait. <laughs> no. There'll never be nothing to write about because there's one thing after another. And she doesn't stop behind bars when she's in prison, when she's in jail. There's just non-stop content there's non-stop uh things to discuss and and whether they're incident reports or phone calls and it's like oh my god because you're just never going to get to the end right there is no conclusion and so it's just going to keep going keep going keep going and yeah crime careers you have done just such an amazing no i needed to be done so long ago <laughs> i know i, I know needed to be done so long ago you'll get there and you'll get to the point where you'll feel like you know what this is I feel content with what I got and you'll feel, you'll feel right. You'll know in your heart and you've just put your heart and soul into it and you've done so much and you'll know when it's right. And Hey, if there's more and you I feel like, more, okay, I feel like action. here's where I'm willing to quit. Yeah. A sequence series. Okay. Here's where, here's where I'm willing to quit. The moment, the very goddamn moment that we figure out who Edgar is, <laughs> then I will publish the book. Yeah, and I will quit. No, I will quit. I will quit. I've got editors. I've got proofreaders. We got the whole thing. I will quit as soon as we figure out who Edgar is. Yeah. Well, we'll be waiting forever. We'll be waiting forever, Crime Curious. <laughs> no. Yeah. We'll be waiting no, forever. it's going to happen soon. Edgar, is, Edgar doesn't exist. 
That was my attempt at closure. <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never know because it's a made up fairy tale in her mind. You know, it, it's it's just no, I need closure. <laughs> You'll get it, but you're doing an amazing job, and I'm so proud of you, Crime Curious. I um, feel like we can I feel like we can figure out who Edgar is like enough that um, yeah, I feel like I feel like we could put a stamp on Edgar and then I could publish. Yeah. Well, we'll try. We'll try. But you know what? If it doesn't happen in like the next, I, I don't know, we'll get like a time frame on. And if it doesn't happen within the next that time frame, then it's like, you know what? Just push on. Because if it has to be like a series, like a series sequence books, then do that. You know, like don't overwhelm yourself. Either way, I very much look forward to um, your book and I can't wait to read it. But does I'm anybody gonna... remember Edgar before the trial? No, I don't. I don't remember. He existed before the trial? Oh, yeah. Letitia told Crime Online about him in uh, September of 2020. Oh, no, I had no idea. Oh, yeah. It was... Gannon died because of Albert's excessive gambling debt. Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's that's ridiculous. Um, oh, thank you, Elena. Yeah, we do love you, Crime Curious. You're, I, I very much cannot wait to read the book. I'm very excited. Um, Danielle says, wasn't Edgar on the cruise? I'm not sure. It, oh, my God. Don't even get me started. Somebody who doesn't exist. Oh, my God. She was all about getting that cruise passenger list. And I was told early on, I was given misinformation. I thought for a while that I knew who Edgar was. And I believe that Edgar was a real estate agent named Dave Gardner. Oh, God, it was a whole big thing. Really? Yeah, but it was misinformation. She's just, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but all right, I got to hop on for tank because I have to get up early. But Crime Curious, I appreciate you so much for coming on. You always appear three times and I say your name. And I appreciate it. because Not whenever always. I look, whenever I look for facts of this case and whenever I have confusion, I go to you. Because I have so much respect for you for this case. You have devi devoted so much time and energy. And seriously, like, I just, I have a lot, a lot of respect for you. And so if you guys aren't already following uh, Crime Curious's channel... Please, I'm going to drop her link. And then she also has her website, which is very, very easy, www.crimecurious.com. And I, we all are very much looking forward to your book. And then when you do finally publish your book, we're all sending a copy to Letitia. We're sending a damn copy to Tisha. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to send a copy to every person who's incarcerated yes, like so across the entire like the entire country and i'm so not talking that's... denver women's or topeka or anything else i want to send one copy of my book to every incarcerated woman across the entire country for free no charge yes let's do it <laughs> I can't wait. And thank you, one who sees for becoming a member. Let's see. I just want her to end up like with the unavoidable, no matter what, that book is going to be floating near her. And I want it to haunt her. And she can't like just, I want it to be sitting so close to her and that it's in her eye contact. And she knows it's there. And she will naturally try to turn it in her favor, but she will fail. She will fail. And I have no doubt about it. And I just very much cannot wait for it to finally be published and for all of your hard work to She'll be like, oh, my God, and somebody wrote a book about me. No, baby. Somebody me. wrote a book to stop everyone and anyone who is even remotely like you, you fucking cunt. Mm -hmm. Amen. Fuck her. Fuck you, Tisha. But thank you so much, Crime Curious. I love you. I love everybody. I love you too. Have a wonderful night, and I'll talk to you all soon.